Welcome to the MindDuck Book Podcast. Joining me is Paolo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And Martin. Hello. I am so happy that you agreed to do this. This is my favorite spin-off podcast that started <laughs> from the MindDuck Japan podcast, where I'm the host and we talk about all things Japan, about traveling and culture and all things like that. But recently I decided to branch out and do things about other topics. And my favorite thing to talk about is books. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's fine. That, that's a great sound effect. Right yeah, now. thank you. It works. <laughs> so on this episode, we we'd like to do it different than the Mind Deck Japan podcast. It's gonna be very simple. We're gonna do two parts, and the first is gonna be uh, some factual information, our opinions about the book, and then the second part is gonna be all full-on spoilers. And to start with, because this is the first episode, I'd like to tell you a little bit about the people here. So uh, I guess let me start with myself. <laughs> yes, <laughs> uh, you're the host, yeah. so it's only fair. So my name is Philip. I'm from the Czech Republic, and I don't enjoy Czech literature at all, and I never read poetry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the only poetry I ever liked was a random book I read by William Blake, and I don't know why, but doesn't matter. And then I always read everything by Orson Scott Card, who wrote and the Ender's Game. Uh, recently, I loved the Dune books from Frank Herbert and uh, usually sci-fi. That's my deal. So how about you guys? All right. So I'm Paolo. Um, I'm from Italy. I I don't know anything about Czech literature other than Kafka, I guess, but... Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I do like... I do like uh, I've never read anything from Kafka, but I do like Italian literature. Uh, actually, my favorite writer... Um, is Italian. His name is Italo Calvino. I don't know if any of you... I haven't heard know. of him. Yeah, yeah, he's not so famous outside of Italy. What kind of thing does he write about? Um, he had a long career and he changed styles hmm. several times. Uh, he's He started writing after the Second World War. Oh, okay. So it's more uh, like a real true story. At the beginning, yes. Mm. After that, he started writing kind of like fables for adults, mm. which sounds very oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds, sounds like the porn parody. Of, no, no, of, that's of something like I would Snow be into White. actually. <laughs> um, it, it's super interesting. Um, he wrote some of my favorite books, um, but some of his books are like super strange. Like um, my favorite book probably is called *The Invisible Cities*, which is this book where like there is uh, Marco Polo talking to the great Khan mm. about um, the city he has traveled to. But they are like fake cities, of course. They are not real cities. Um, and between each city, there is like uh, this intermission where they speak and it's very dreamy. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it's a very strange book. It's very hard to explain, but it's super cool. Um, other than that, like Philip, I, I really dislike poetry. Um, I, I, I don't understand the point of poetry. This I think is not the poetry podcast. Yeah, I, I, like, I don't know. I don't understand. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I, I it really bothers me. Um, I, I like sci-fi. I like fantasy. I don't really have a genre. Like, usually what I when I ask for recommendations about books, uh, what I ask is if it is depressing... <laughs> And if it has like an interesting setting, Wait, yeah. so usually that's what I'm looking depressing for. Depressing is a good thing. Uh, so you yeah. want the depression? Yes. In your mind. Okay. That makes a lot of sense after you gave me your recommendations, but we yeah. talk about it like. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, I mean, l like the the one I told you about Celine, like yeah. Journey to to the End of the Night. That's probably it's not the most depressing, but that's like a book if you want to hate humanity. Oh. Okay. You should and yeah, hate yourself. I see now that's the deal now. I see <laughs> what the books you read now. Yes. Yeah, I see a pattern here. Yeah. Which that's why you like June as well because it gets into that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Uh, so and yeah. Paolo just started reading uh, the Free Body Problem sci-fi series, which is like a Chinese. Uh, <laughs> sensation which he called the depression <laughs> books he, he met and he said my depression book have arrived and he had this like s like smirk on his face and i was like what yeah <laughs> so that's that's pablo's deal yeah thank you uh, okay i guess uh it's my turn so hi i'm martin and i love poetry 
Really? No, actually no. Okay. Uh, but I was scared. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> if, if it was three, we're out. I would before the first episode started. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, I'm a person who really enjoys uh, sci-fi and fantasy as well. And I'm not really into many books that are about drama that's based on reality and or that could happen in reality. I like to kind of lose myself in the stories of the books and just forget about the... It's, it's kind of mm. my escape mechanism, uh, the books. Yeah, yeah I see. Uh, mm. Which is why this book was a uh, 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 tough nut to uh, to read but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah I'm, i enjoy uh, like recently i enjoy a lot of fantasy i like books from patrick rothfuss i l- like books from brandon sanderson who i uh, like gouge on like uh, uh, furiously in the last mm. like year and a half it's just book after book from him because he's a really good author of fantasy and uh, a bit of sci-fi and i also uh, enjoyed dune uh, i'm not sure if i'm a, like as big fan like philip and paulo here but uh, i see a good like good points in it i just read the first book uh, mm. and i enjoyed it i'm not sure if i want to read the rest oh okay I think the first one is the thing to read. If you give up at, after the first one, I think it's not that bad. No, I think you should always read the second one. I think, I think. Okay, we can discuss about yeah. this when we do the new podcast. Dune's gonna be like 700 <laughs> episodes after yeah. we get it. <laughs> so I don't think that the first book, that you have to read all the Dune books. I think the first book is the most important. <laughs> well, unsur- pa- pa- unsurprisingly. Pa- 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 dis- disagrees. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't disagree. I just say uh, like... I think, like, Dune books, like, it makes sense if you split them into couples. Like, if you read the first, you should read the second. If you read the third, you should read the fourth. If you read the fifth, (laughs) you should read the sixth. That's just my opinion, because... Yeah, they kind of go together. The second one directly, like, continues with the first one. They have the same main characters. Like, the the second one has the same main characters as the first. The third has the same main character as the fourth. Mm. And the fifth as the same main characters as the six. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. So maybe maybe I'll just grab that second one. And Minor try. warning. No, second one, my major depression book. Major depression. Oh, that's oh, oh, major so, depression. Oh, oh, you gotta do like uh, a warning. <laughs> I'll leave that for another time then because <laughs> I've been depressed enough by this book. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I hope you, that gives you an idea about what kind of people we are. <laughs> So there is, there is like escapist, depressionists, and I'm just egoist. I don't know what I am. Okay, I don't know. I guess like all escapists in a way. Since, yeah, of course. Like we all like fantasy. I'm the overthinker, of, yeah. as, as you know, if you listen yeah. to anything else uh, that I've done. Oh, yeah. And I love books for like ideas. So I, I like a good idea behind yeah. a book. That's what I'm yeah. looking for. So let's get into it. Let's start with some factual information. And the first part, like I said, we're going to give you the general opinions and uh, try to get you interested or uh, discouraged. And then (laughs) by the second part, you should be decided if you're going to be spoiled or if you want to hit pause and then come back after you have read the book. This book is pretty easy to read. It's only 200 pages. So if you're actually uh, trying to go along with us, I recommend... Uh, starting with this one, that's why we started mm-hmm. with this one because it's really easy to read. It's really short. Yeah. There are like five chapters. Yeah, I think like if you're a fast reader, you can probably read it in a couple of days. Yeah, I think like, so. It, it took me like three weeks because I'm super slow. But I read it like I read everything, which is very rarely and mm-hmm. very short times, and I it took me like two weeks. Yeah. Uh, the name of the book is Confessions, and it's by Kanae Minato. Original name is Kokuhaku. Thank you. Kokuhaku means confessions, but usually in Japanese, it's associated with um, love confessions. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ah, oh, okay. So usually it's the person declaring mm. their love for someone else. So it came out in 2008, uh, translated into English uh, in 2014, which is the thing we read. Mm. And... Uh, the writer wrote this when she was 30 years old, mm. was trying to find out if she was a teacher, didn't find it. <laughs> I hope she wasn't a teacher. 
I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I was reading about her on Wikipedia mm-hmm. and uh, all over the place on the internet, and I found that in Japan people call her the Queen of Iamisu. Yes. What's Iamisu? So Iamisu is um, the kind of uh, books that you read to disgust yourself. Yeah, I found that it's called you mystery yeah 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 <laughs> so it, 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 in a way it's kind of like um gory for horror mm. but it's more like disgusting at a psychological level yeah, than so at, um like it's a very, visual level. that's a very good point i think this is like the psychological gore yeah so she was really successful she won the honya taisho which is a japanese bestseller award in 2009 the next year Mm. pretty quickly she also won uh, a bunch of other awards and the film was very quickly adapted oh, sorry the book was very quickly adapted into a movie mm. in 2010 immediately won best picture for the japan Ac- academy prize mm. and then it won best foreign language film so super high expectations uh, and the, so the movie is on japanese netflix and i think also on international netflix there is one interesting point i just learned about okay. the movie i haven't watched it but Me neither the yeah, the not me either. yeah the actress who plays the main character is uh the voice actress for Hel- Elsa in in Frozen ah which is pretty awkward <laughs> that is weird <laughs> yeah. uh, if you watch Frozen in Japanese now um <laughs> it, it would sound very strange this is gonna ruin it <laughs> yeah 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 and um no because she she's like she's mostly she does mostly um comedical roles mm. so i was very surprised when i when i heard that she mm. plays yeah like this character oh, i see yeah. so this writer is very highly regarded i checked that she has written a lot of other books so mm. she's still pretty young so she's gonna uh, write a lot more <laughs> 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 have you have you heard about any of this before you started reading i i had expectations because again um i received this book as a present And the person who gave me the book said it was their favorite book. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I had expectations. But other than that, I I like recently I really like to go into books completely blind. Yeah, that's my like, deal. Knowing that's the best with movies nothing. too. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's the best way. Well, I've actually uh, heard about the movie first uh, from another podcast and. I've uh, they've interested me enough so that I wanted to watch it and then you came along and said hey let's do a podcast about books and let's read this book wait that's the same book as the movie <laughs> I wanted to so I just like uh, uh, kind of switched uh, and instead of watching the movie I've uh, decided to read the book mm. and yeah uh, here we are yeah so, thank you uh, I didn't really have <laughs> Many expectation other than that I've heard the movie is really good movie mm. and uh, I kind of expected that the book will be as well because well uh, if it's a good movie it had to have a good uh, uh, origin right so mm. uh, I had expectations but they were completely blown away so oh, really okay <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. In a, we, can we still in a good sense, okay a yeah good right sense. i was about to say like can we already talk about if it was in a good way or in a bad way you can talk, you can talk about right. anything okay. you want just try to not like say what yeah, the I, ending don't wanna, was. yeah i don't want to <laughs> okay. say too much because i don't want to spoil things right right we can talk this through later <laughs> so just to keep things general uh, my expectations were non-existent and i wasn't amazed i got really into it it was super easy to read hmm. and i got a little bit like discouraged by the end because I felt like I'm going to get into it later. Mm-hmm. But uh, I wanted to say, like, this is about a teacher and a school. Uh, most stories about Japanese culture are in the school. <laughs> I'm not yes. surprised. And uh, this had me worried and then convinced that if I ever have children, I don't want to have them in Japan. <laughs> 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 this is my, like, <laughs> message of this book. <laughs> Right. Um for me personally, I really like the book. I- I'm not a super expert on Japanese literature. Uh but I have read other books, but the other books I've read were all like classics of Japanese literature like Dasai Ozamu. Okay. Or like uh, Yukio Mishima and so on, uh, which 
fall into the depressing, yeah, that's super the depressing books. About, right? you me yes. Yes. Okay. So this was the, the first modern Japanese book I've ever read. And it is much more in line with the other Japanese media I've consumed, like comic books and uh, movies and games. Um, so I was not completely blown away, but um, I really liked it. Uh, we can talk about the ending. We can talk about a, s- a few points, which I feel like um, were not exceptional. But I really like uh, the overall idea. I really like the structure mm. and the way it was written. I think it's one of the interesting things that this book has, which I always like, is that it's written in a very peculiar style. That's true. Yeah, which... Uh, I mean, it's not super original. Other books are written the same way, but where it's... Um, each chapter is written with a different narration point. So the fir- very first chapter is just basically the voice of the main character talking, mm. uh, uninterrupted. Uh, some of the chapters are like diaries, diary entries. Some of the chapters are more like um, introspective. Hmm. So I really like the different styles. I like that yeah. idea. You could say that each chapter is the different point of view. Yeah. Different person. Yeah, you could say it's like each chapter is a different confession, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah like... Exactly. Yeah, so the structure of the book, pretty good. The writing, pretty unusual, pretty interesting. The thing I didn't like the most was that it suffers from like why don't you talk to each other syndrome that I hate in movies <laughs> and books. Uh, that's that's one of my biggest gripes with this with this book, that the characters, like, I overthink things, but these characters, they overthink so hard, and if they just said oh. something to somebody else, it wouldn't have happened at all. Yeah, I think yeah. that was, like, a little bit over the top in some of the parts as well. Like, some of the characters got so delusional that it already like it became a fantasy at that point <laughs> because it felt like i i guess it can happen but it's so like it uh, can happen like, when you get mad but not like yeah but i yeah, guess that like, that was kind of the point like the idea was it was starting from what the main character says at the beginning which i guess we can say like it's not really a spoiler which is there is this law in Japan so that if you're younger than a certain age, no matter the crime you commit, mm. you cannot be judged. Uh, essentially, yeah. like yeah, you will always mm. be forgiven. Essentially, and it starts from this idea, and then it takes it to the extreme, mm. which is very interesting. This is what I thought the book would be. I thought it would be pointing out problems with Japanese law and trying to see the problems in society and have like a on the nose message about like what the problem is and it just touched on it in the beginning and that was never brought up again so i was like i think it did actually like throughout the whole book it was just hidden in the oh, okay like parts of uh the confessions it was taken into uh, account it wasn't like in depth or it wasn't the depth. main point yeah it wasn't the main point of the book but uh it had a major like yeah major that's, true. Part. that's true i take that back yeah and i do feel like it it talks about certain aspects of Japanese society that I guess the author wanted to critique in a way. Which definitely does. Um, Like, uh, you know, the view on family, uh, traditional families uh, versus, you know, non-traditional families, the the pressure on teachers and the unfair treatment that they, they go through. You know, there are certain points. And also I feel like there is a certain critique also. There is one character in particular. I feel like it's there just to, for the author to represent a certain kind of teachers, mm. which she clearly oh, yeah, dislikes. That's, that's true. Oh, yeah. Um, because like it doesn't serve any particular purpose to the story. So it's just there to, mm. to represent this idea. So I do feel like in a way, like as you were saying, it is more of a fantasy, even though it, like it's a very realistic I mean, in a way... It felt too yeah. real to me. <laughs> didn't feel like fantasy at all. And What I mean by fantasy is like... It is the... Um, starting from a realistic uh, setting... Okay. Um, it takes some ideas to the extreme in a way where like it would very hardly happen in reality. But at the same time, you can also see it happening. Like, mm. it's not impossible. It's definitely yeah. the horror element. It suggests yeah. that these things could be happening all over the place and nobody would know that it's like the depression 
part of this. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really extreme example of like how fucked up things can get mm. when like people don't really communicate with with each other yeah. too, too much and when they like live in their own world of different uh, ideas and usually like uh, kind of twisted and wrong That's ideas right? yeah. yeah and also like i feel like another interesting point was which maybe is the most depressing point of the <laughs> book is how much like tragedy and horror are attractive to the media to mm. oh, yeah. younger people compared to uh you know positive stories and uh, mm. successful stories it's also a big point yeah. of this yeah yeah <laughs> so that's that's definitely one of the points why you should be reading or shouldn't be reading this book if you're interested in what japanese people are scared of or what they're really worried about and how they like live their lives and this is definitely what they would be worried about be it real or not real i think this is one of the biggest issues with the japanese politeness and not being direct with anything and then the overthinking accelerates and escalates into like levels be it real or be it just a fantasy this is definitely what goes through like a regular japanese student's mind to some extent i would expect would you feel like that i feel like there is definitely like something to say about like is this something that real Japanese students feel? Hmm. I wouldn't know. I, <laughs> I, I would hope not. Um, I do feel like, and again, this is like one of the points I like the least about the book. I mean, it wants to show how devious uh, even younger uh, kids can be, hmm. which is very interesting. Yeah, I just want to say that yeah. this definitely is the reason why it resonated with Japanese audiences so much. Because people are definitely, if they don't think like this, they definitely feel like this sometimes. And that's why why I think this is so successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a, a relevant point. But at the same time, I, I think the point wasn't really to show like how most people, how most Japanese people or how most Japanese students think or feel. Or like their their thought process. It was more about to show how things can go wrong and what happens when they go wrong hmm. i guess that, that's to me that, that that was the main purpose i just want to say like if if somebody is interested in like or if somebody is not actually convinced like about reading this book hmm. uh you should just try the first chapter yeah and, mm. like uh just read the first chapter and if it doesn't grab you then don't read the rest that's but a good if, advice if, if the first chapter grabs you then it's a book for you i think because it's like the the first chapter is written written in a way that uh, it blew my mind <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, and i went through so many different feelings and emotions while reading <laughs> this like it was like first like wondered and like surprised and like kind of disgusted by what's happening and then compassionate but not really and uh, like every every little like if if you could find like this emotion wheel on the internet maybe like uh, you could like track my my route throughout the whole wheel <laughs> and it was uh, really well written and maybe this was the main like reason why i kept reading like the the first chapter really grabbed me and the rest was uh, just basically an additional like information to the first thing like you 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 basically had most of the information you needed from the first chapter and then just everything else is more and more stuff piled on the first chapter that's a good point right? yeah and so if you like the first chapter i think you will enjoy the rest because you will know more about it but you can actually just go with the first chapter and... Yeah, no, but I completely agree. Um, I just remember, yeah, I remember reading the first chapter. I was really into it. I think it definitely starts better than it ends. That, yes, yeah, it, we could yeah. all agree on yeah. that, so... <laughs> so, in the, before we end this section, would you recommend it? Yes. Well, I recommend it yeah, of course. <laughs> to, to Philip, so... I'm hesitant. For me, it's like, if you're really into Japanese culture and you really want to see what the thinking process of somebody who's completely like a different environment to grow up in person like then definitely if you're just curious about 
like a fun story, I I have to say I wouldn't recommend. It. <laughs> That's it's not a fun story. It's it's, no. it's a it's a catchy story. It's like uh, in uh, it engulfs you in mm. the story, mm. but it, it's not a happy. Story. I was it's a memorable story. I was engulfed yes. partially. I was engulfed like the f- the first half, I think. So okay. I'm not as it, books usually grow on me, and this book like went from like okay it's great and then it's like very interesting and it went like a little bit down and it went back up and then it went more down so that's how i felt in this all book. right all right I, I do feel like yeah i think it starts really well mm. and i think it's it peaks early that is true i agree with that but i i don't see that necessarily as a problem because again first it's a very short book um and second as martin said like the first chapter kind of like covers what the book is going to be about and uh, most of its themes and uh, and everything else. So I don't see it necessarily as a bad point. But yeah, yeah. it is true that like definitely starts, it peaks very early and then it goes down towards the end. But yeah, I don't think that's necessarily a, a negative aspect and I would still recommend it. But okay. yeah, it's not for everyone. Yeah, yeah, I I think we can all agree with that. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I, I would also say like if you like mysteries, it's it's a good book because like if you like mysteries and don't mind getting depressed while reading the <laughs> mystery and while trying to figure out the mystery, then it's a good book yeah. as well. Yeah. I see. So just to finish the first part, I wanted to read some quotes. So uh, that's not spoilers. <laughs> so just to give you an idea what kind of deal this book is. So very short quote. A cornered rat will bite the cat. That's the thing that stuck with me. It was at a point that I can't tell because it was so... Uh, okay. Yeah. It, it was at some point. Shit went down when it happened. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so other quote is quite long. But I think it's a pretty good idea about like what this book's deal is weak people find even weaker people to be their victims and the victimized often feel that they have only two choices put up with the pain or end their suffering in death but they're wrong the world you live in is much bigger than that if the place in which you find yourself is too painful i say you should be free to seek another less painful place of refuge there is no shame in seeking a safe place. I want you to believe that somewhere in this wide world there is a place for you, a safe haven. So it ends in kind of a positive message, which this book doesn't end in a positive yeah. message. No. That was actually a good <laughs> quote. Like I really like that one as well. Like, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, one of the few positive uh, like messages that happen in the book. It actually helped me to overcome <laughs> overcome the depression <laughs> that came from everything else. So yeah, it helps. Okay. Yeah, it, it is kind of like you know at the opposite from what most of the book is about. Mm, so I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it is. It is a very good quote. I mean, yeah. There's the, the there's the one character that's basically the personifi- personification of the like the the good guy or like uh, oh, the, right. the, you know who I'm talking about probably right. Mm. Uh, and that's the quote like from him, right? I yeah, think. yeah, that's him. Mm. So he's the he's the source of edi- everything good that's happening in the book i think mm-hmm. <laughs> just very little <laughs> is it a dog <laughs> there is a dog like the dog does nothing bad oh yeah this dog okay <laughs> <laughs> completely forgot about it <laughs> so last quote doing something good or remarkable isn't easy it's much easier to condemn people who do the wrong thing than it is to do the right thing yourself. Yeah, I've actually written that one down. Yeah, that's also a very good one. Yeah. Yeah, I can, uh, I can like have a follow up for this one because that's from the same person, and it it goes like, uh, I think we regular people may have forgotten the basic truth: we don't really have the right to judge anyone else, and that's that's mm. what stuck with me as well. 
Uh, yeah, that's also, that's also really nice. Yeah, I, d- d- then I have another quote, but I think I would be paraphrasing. It's like, uh, it it follows the, I think it's like, it's much easier to condemn people who do the wrong than do the right thing. Hmm. And then it follows up with like, you know, it's hard to be the first one to blame someone. Hmm. And then Mizuki says that like, uh, it's easier to be the second or like to join the one who blames someone else. And then once you've yeah. done it, like blame someone evil for their wrongdoing, you may find that you want that feeling again, that you need someone else to accuse just to get the rush back. Hmm. The second time around, you might have to look further down the food chain, be more and more creative with your accus- accusations. And it becomes a witch hunt. That's that's like uh, <laughs> what stuck with me as well. I remember this one a lot. Yes, same, same here. I don't remember any of these quotes. But, <laughs> like for, um, for you, it's a year ago. We just read it, so <laughs> that's why you remember. I'm sorry. That's fine. I read I, I read too much Dune in the middle. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the first part. If you uh, want to hit pause, read the book, come back. If you don't care, let's get into spoilers. So, in the so s- yeah. there is a dog. <laughs> Doesn't die. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't die. It's not. It's not John Wick. Yeah. There's a website. Does the dog die? So it Doesn't. is a revenge story, but it's not about a dog dying. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my, my synopsis: Japanese children murdering each other in a school while while the teacher embraces it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no. I don't know if that's like yeah. uh, really... Yeah, I'm just uh, sensationalizing, like, but yes. The teacher didn't really embrace that. <laughs> like, yeah. She used it. So let us me say like a bit what, for what happens, and if you have any comments, or if you want to... I want to quickly get through what happened, and then we'll get to like what you think about details. That, that's okay. Okay. All right. So, so what happens is that uh, a child gets murdered, and it's the daughter of the class teacher, and she just re- enacts revenge. Actually, I have the uh, tagline. I think this is kind of a spoiler, which, which is why I didn't say it. But on the book cover in English, it says, "Her pupils killed her daughter. Now she will have her revenge." <laughs> <laughs> it sounds yeah, like a B it, movie from that's the That's exactly what really I like. Yeah. yeah, like an action movie with with Stedham or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's pretty much what happens, but not in the way you imagine at all. So she gives a long speech to the class, which is the whole first chapter and the first thirty minutes of the of the movie. Mm. And she like gives them milk, and then she tells them like that her daughter was killed, and she knows who. And then her husband has AIDS, and then she put the AIDS blood in the milk, and the killers who killed the child got AIDS from her putting it in the milk. That's like the first twist. Well, that's what she says. That's what she says, and that's what like the red. He- that's where the red herring starts. Yes. Uh, okay, so there's a bunch of levels to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know how like how do, how should we discuss this? Like, should we well, discuss well, this now or should we well, discuss again, this like, after? Well, again, I guess this is full uh, uh, spoiler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. say anything you want. I just want to go like what happened, and then we can like get into the details. All right. Okay. So, okay. Just continue. Yeah. So I, it's going to be very brief. So then she knows who killed them. So she tries to like make their life miserable and have the have the revenge. So she manipulates them into having the worst life. So how? They killed the girl was that one of the boys who is involved is like a very clever inventor and he made a thing that that electrocutes somebody yeah the murder machine he called it I and think. He, he was very excited to test it and he wanted like a victim like a co- an accomplice which he didn't care about at all so he manipulated him into going with him and killing this little girl so they shocked the girl with like a small purse that gave her an electric shock she passed out didn't get killed, but the boy who was manipulated freaked out and threw her in the pond or something. I think it was a pond. No, it was a, it was a swimming pool. Swimming pool. A swimming pool that he was tasked yeah. to clean uh, that day. Mm. Yeah. And she died, so he's now the murderer, and that's what's eating him up, and that's why he goes mad, and that's the most like biggest part of this book, how the people go mad from all that happened. Yes. So there are a bunch of twists. And uh, the only person who is trying to prevent all this madness is uh, the husband who got AIDS. But then he dies and the the, <laughs> yes. the, 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 the wife, 
the wife just like talking to her husband. It's like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be nice. And then as soon as he dies, he's like, fuck this, I'm killing them even more. It's just like, <laughs> just like yeah. even worse. <laughs> so I could go into all the details how everybody gets mad, goes mad, but I guess that's now we can discuss the details. So I would start from the ending because I feel like you didn't like it mm. and it seems like Martin also didn't like it. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I, but I, I think it could be better, but it Brian, wasn't bad. So what is it that you... Because I also I was not super excited about mm. the ending, but in a way I also liked so could like, you say the, the what idea. happened just to be clear. Well, okay, so the ending is that in the end the the guy who made like the the kid who made the killing machine planted some bombs um into the school. He was planning to kill like a, a whole bunch of people because he was super mad that no one uh, noticed that he was the murderer and himself. He, I think he wanted to kill himself as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, explosion. exactly. Because he wanted to get his mother's attention. That's the whole plot. Like he's yeah. through, he's doing all this to get to his yeah. mother. Yes, as, as one character said it, he has mama issues or mo- mother's complex because yeah. that's the only thing he cares about. Yeah, but uh, the the teacher finds out and uh, she plants the bombs in. Uh, his mother's office, so he actually ends up killing his own mother, hmm. and that's that's how the story ends. So the teacher who, so I'm just gonna look up the names. What's the name? Uh, the teacher was uh, Moriguchi. Sensei. Moriguchi. So yeah, Moriguchi yeah. is the teacher who started this whole thing with the milk. Yeah. So she finds out he planted the bomb, and she puts the bomb in the university where his mother that he's trying to get attention of works, and then he blows up the bomb, trying to blow him blow himself up, but kills the mother. Yes. And uh, the Moriguchi is very happy about it, I guess. Yes, and, and yes. So what did you think about that? Well, I was disappointed in the ending because I thought that it's trying to play her to be the ultimate evil. And when we found out that she didn't really plant AIDS in the milk, or did she? Uh, she not, didn't, she didn't. She did. She, she did, did, but the, uh, ra- the rate of how much you can contract AIDS from that is so minuscule that she basically thought it wouldn't happen. Yeah. That's what yeah. they said, yeah. So she did, but she felt like it wouldn't happen, so it's not a big deal. Which, which yeah, 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 yeah. But she planted the thought in their head, and I think that, like, fucked them up even more than... That was definitely like, the point. Yeah. That, that, well, I, I, think... I, I feel like it fucked up Naoki, so the weak kid. Yeah. Mm. Because the other one... Um, was normal and checked yeah. The other one actually eight. embraced yeah. it, right? He wanted <laughs> yeah. to get sick because like he wanted she, to She fucked attention. up with him by essentially telling him that he was a failure because he, he was not the one who killed his daughter. Mm. Like, uh, her daughter. Which is, this is my, like biggest gripes in this book like people not thinking like okay they're mad okay this is happening okay this is happening but like the guy who's like clever so he immediately went to get checked out in the hospital and found out he didn't have AIDS yeah. the other yeah. guy it occurred to him after like how long like he was like but that, I, was... that one I understand uh, like I don't like he's like 13 okay but he's like okay okay like it's scary <laughs> to go to the hospital and ask like for a AIDS check like there are ways to do it. Like you could pay people, you could like do stuff. But when you're 13, it's not so easy. But he already that did so much stuff. So that's true. He should be like. So my my okay. He didn't so, even question it. That's my. Th- okay, thing. I agree with that, but not really. Like I feel like that's normal. My my. He didn't listen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. Continue. No, I wanted to say because like actually my biggest gripe with the book is that it's something that is very common with most Japanese modern media, which is. They are so used to considering kids like adults, like most like comics or Mm. like TV shows and so on. They portray stories of like high schoolers Mm. who clearly don't act like high schoolers. They Mm. act kind of like adults. Oh, yeah. So in this book, for most of the book, they act like this book suffers from the same problem so that most of them act like adults. They don't really reason like high schoolers. Yes. Uh, like the way they hold the grudge, the way they react to things, especially like for example the class representative, the one who decides to help. Uh, Mizuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the way she acts doesn't make sense for a like thirteen year old. Hmm. Yeah, she has a really a lot of deep thoughts that like I wouldn't expect from a thirteen year old. Yeah. Yeah, but then on the opposite side, Naoki is the only one who actually acts like his age. 
Like, again, if you give me, like, a 13-year-old and you told him, like, he has AIDS and also, like, he's living with this idea that, you know, everyone knows he killed, like, a, a child. Like, of course, like, I, I can see that he wouldn't get tested. Like, he would just go okay, mental. Okay, but you can look up. He spent all his life, the rest of his life, he spent online. And he could have just searched, like, what is the chance of, like, drinking blood with AIDS? And how, how high is the chance to be infected? That is true. None of that. He just, like, completely <sighs> That's true. went bonkers uh, yeah, for no reason. Like I think, like... <laughs> I think Naoki was too self-centered about this. I think he has a truth in his head that he just conjures basically for the whole book. Hmm. Uh, his his whole idea, I think, was that uh, he didn't listen like monologue uh, Moriguchi Sensei was doing, right? Uh, Like he cared until yeah, he even said he didn't. He realized, or came again to their house and said that she like knows that he mm. did it. Right at that point, I think that Naoki Moriguchi planted this idea in his head, mm. and Naoki just yeah embraced that idea and just cl- clang onto it and didn't know like. He didn't have any idea that he can do anything else. Same as same as Shuya didn't really have any idea that he could just go and visit his mother at the university. Right? It's like this. Uh, <laughs> like th- th- they basically live in their own world, and they. Yeah, that was stop, another thing I hated. Like, yeah. They are not really <laughs> uh, trying to find anything new, anything that would help them. Right. I don't know. It's yeah. It, like the the point of Naoki was that he is so self centered yeah, that he can't guess, see anything yeah. else think than about it like their match himself and, and their own how match. he is destructive uh, to the environment around him uh, and how the environment would destroy him if he would do something or if he like would come out with the truth, right? And then there's like Shuya, who is the, the opposite. He's like. I don't fucking care about anyone. Everyone is an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> From that point of view, yeah. they are like enclosed in their own ways and they can't just get out of it. So that's why it kind of makes sense. Yeah, just to be clear what happened, if you haven't read this book and you're having it spoiled. So after they got it in their heads that they got AIDS, even though they didn't get AIDS, they went completely mad. And Naoki is the guy who dropped her in the swimming pool. Shuya is the guy who invented the machine. So Shuya doesn't care, just goes on his business. And Naoki just locks himself in his room and starts to like wash everything and protect everybody and not touch everybody and not come out for like a year maybe. Or half year? No, I think it yeah, it was like a, was some months. Uh, long time. Yeah, but yeah. It was long time. at the end of uh, the term. It was like a summer vacation, mm. I think, at, uh, the, at the yeah. end. And then he started, like, people started going to school in April, right? Mm. No, so no, 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 no. Like, the initial speech was, um, was at the end of March. Like at the end of the school ah, year. Okay, okay. So it was after. Then they had they had the yeah uh, yeah yeah. The, it was the after the uh, uh, spring vacation, and then uh, they yeah. should have been going to school, but Naoki just didn't. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, so he goes completely mad, and people uh, like visit him, like the new class teacher with a classmate, regularly visit him to give him homework, and the mother also goes mad and. This is a thing. Yeah, like I think, like okay, another interesting point which I really like is the way that, in a way, so most of the story is centered around the two kids, mm. but at the same time you can center the story around like the three mothers, yeah. mm. because one is like the overprotective mother, like super obsessed, which is like the super standard Japanese family where like you know the they live together and everything seems nice and and beautiful and they want to protect appearances as much as possible Mm -hmm. because like Naoki's biggest problem is he doesn't want people to know because he wants to protect appearances because that's what his mother is all about and then there is like the absent mother which is um, Mm. Shuya's mother yeah so in that case the problem is like she basically stops caring about his son exact opposite yeah and so he essentially becomes a psychopath because his mother completely abandoned him 
Do you remember what happened to his father? His father got remarried and... Uh, no, 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 he didn't leave. Uh, yeah, he hated... Uh, lived the, he got remarried, yeah, yeah. They yeah. lived okay. together for a long time. And then, yeah. basically, he actually says that he liked his foster mother uh, quite a lot. But then yeah. a new baby mm. was born. And they had a they had a baby and they basically pushed him away. Uh, and then they I didn't see. care about him. So he kind of, yeah, didn't like that. And uh, hmm. that's that's where he, he like started to plot his uh, uh, murder devices and uh, and such. Right. And, and then like the third mother would be like Moriguchi. So the main character who was the only decent mother, despite the fact that she had to go through all of these adversities. Uh, you know, throughout her life and uh, with her husband, um, you know, having HIV and, uh, you know, essentially having to raise the daughter on her own without being married, being judged for all of that. But she, in the end, she, she was supposedly like the best mother. Like, mm. Do you think that's actually the truth? Or like, do you think that's just because we have the most information about her? Because like... Uh, we basically don't know anything about like uh, Shuya's mother, right? No, anything, we don't know anything about her mm. like inner uh, feelings, about her inner uh, like what she wanted to accomplish. That's uh, true. Maybe she had her mm. reasons, like, and the, I was hoping they would explain that a little bit. Yeah, that wasn't there at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's that's a part. Like, I would have loved. Like, so. In the ending, like she just dies, and it would have been, I think, it would have been more interesting to get instead of just her dying. Like, I think there was just like a way to end the story with a very closed ending. Mm. Um, I think it would have been more interesting if the mother would have made an appearance, and she wouldn't have had a confrontation with the son, and you know, because in a way, like what I was really hoping. Uh, the end it would be what I was what I was expecting maybe is you know uh, sh um, Shuya would try to blow up the school and whatever uh, she would fa he would fail because of Moriguchi but um, instead Moriguchi would bring his mother hmm. to the school and his mother would be like a normal person and be like what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you fucking stupid? That's, that's what I kind of expected. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. assuming that Moriguchi is a good person. Problem is, Moriguchi isn't a good person yeah. either. Like, there's no good person in that story. Like, everything yeah. is that's what like, I, yeah. fucked up. Well, the dog is the dog good. is good, and, they, <laughs> and the basically husband. the, the good husband. husband was yeah. like bad, and then he become good. Like, like that's the redemption story. Yes. That yeah. It's a redemption story, but, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, everyone else. That's what, that's what I meant with the ending. Like, I felt like the ending was like super evil for the sake of being edgy. Like, I didn't feel. I, like... I agree. Yes, that that that's Wait. like my biggest complaint about no, the actually, ending. Actually, can I come back to uh, the uh, start that we discussed that Moriguchi actually like said that she planted the uh, like AIDS or the uh, the uh, hmm. Sakura no Miya's blood uh, into the milk and then hmm. actually Mizuki hmm. said that uh, she didn't because uh, the test went negative and uh, like hmm. at that point did you guys like have at least a little bit of uh, like a uh, feeling that Moriguchi did this all for like a good purpose like 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 did yeah, this yeah, all like uh, exactly. for a reason that we don't uh, like yet know but it was a good reason maybe like because if if she didn't do it the kids would have found out eventually anyway and they would uh, like uh, ruin the kids even more like ruin the murderers even more or like they would be like even worse off if if the thing didn't come out to light or something like that like i mm. i i was i maybe felt exactly even... like that <laughs> I, I didn't no? feel like that i didn't expect her to be this evil but i i, I thought she wanted to teach yeah. a lesson but at the same time not not in a positive I... way I was sure there would be a multitude of twists and my idea of twists was that she would be exactly not actually doing it. That's what I was thinking about in the monologue. I was like, she's, she hasn't done that. She isn't that man. And she's like the good teacher. Of course, she's going to be the good teacher. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so she did all this and she hasn't thought it through. And I thought the story would be that she tried to like have it turn out a good oh, way yeah. and do it. So it didn't really happen. But then at the end, realizing that it caused so much more shit 
uh, anyway, like the psychological damage and all this yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, and the I, mother ended up get, I, getting killed. And I thought yeah. that uh, that's what would drive her insane, and then she would do something evil because of this realization. So if the story was the same, and there was a slight change, that she would go mad from like eating herself up from the realization that she tried to do something good, and it turned out so bad, then I would have liked it so yeah, much more. And then we that's realized what I that's what good she's uh, a psychopath ending. as well. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, in a way, yeah, I didn't like that she was that crazy at the end again to murder, like, the Shuya's mother. But uh, again, that, that's well, a point that I feel like it would have been better, like, getting a confrontation. But at the same time, I feel like the initial monologue where she explains, like, how she had, like, such a harsh life and everything else was just a way to say, like, you know, fuck this shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, because, yeah, like, yeah, she yeah. went through so much stuff. And, you know, she was finally finding happiness, even though it was still a very difficult situation. And essentially, they removed her only reason to keep li- No, I don't want to say to keep living, but um, her only, like, way into sanity. Because, again, like, she she clearly explains she didn't really care about the job. Uh, her her um, partner was about to die anyway. Um, she didn't have a family. Yeah, so does she do it just for revenge? But, like, I don't get her motive at the end. Like, she's just, like... No, no, I agree. Like, the, the, the ending, like, again, I... Okay, so this is... But this we can go back to what we said at the beginning about the, the genre, mm. the specific genre within uh, Japanese literature mm. that this is uh, a part of. Um, like, in this kind of stories... Usually the ending is like that, exactly because it, the ending has to be like a final shock. Hmm. Like there can't be. And they like, live just, happily uh, ever after. Um, right? uh. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It doesn't have to be like a, a good ending, but like there can't be like a neat yeah, conclusion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like again, what we were suggesting, like if there had been like a final confrontation where you get to see Shuya's mother's feelings and she can confront him mm. and make him like show him like how distasteful what he's doing mm-hmm. is like there would have been a neat ending mm. it would have had been like a horrifying ending mm. but this kind of literature wants to have that horrifying oh, okay. ending okay. that that makes sense yeah yeah another thing i want to say about naoki is so he clo- locked himself up and he he started to go mad and I liked this aspect of the book, like we talked about, that each chapter is from different person's point of view. Mm. So from his point, from like the mother's point of view, and his point of view, that was one of the like clever parts I mm. liked. That she, everybody thought that she or he killed his mother. That just happens at one right. point. But then it turns out that the mother went mad and wanted to kill him herself and take himself uh, with her. And then you think that he killed her in defense, but then it turns out that she couldn't do it and she killed herself and he didn't do anything, just watched it, which yeah. is even more horrifying. Yes. So that was a very clever part of the book. Might be my favorite part of the book because I didn't expect it at all and had like le- clever yes. levels to it. And I feel like that whole part where you read the diary of the mother first and then the ri- diary he wrote and then the conclusions by his sister... Mm. I really like, again, when I said, like, I like different, like, peculiar uh, writing styles, I really like the way it fits. It's kind of like a puzzle Mm. so that you get one perspective and then you get the other perspective and you, like, by getting them together, uh, you understand actually what was going on from both sides. Mm. Um, And as you said, like, again, like, a lot of that situation is about uh, miscommunication or lack of communication. Mm -hmm. But... In like about that, I feel like that's exactly the point. Like it could happen. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like the fact that the mother w- was trying so hard to be the good mother, she wasn't actually listening to her son at all. She only was. She only cared about her ideas and what she thought was good for the son. Mm. Um, so I, I think like that was exactly what the author was going for. Mm-hmm. So I really like that. Yeah. That's a good point. That yeah. was definitely what I wanted to mention. I have a couple of notes here, but I feel like I keep bringing stuff up. <laughs> uh, just to finish up the story. So the mother dies, then he... Uh, everybody dies. Everybody dies. <laughs> so now, Naoki, after the mother dies, he... Not exactly how did he... How he goes to prison. No, oh, he doesn't, doesn't die. die. No, 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 he doesn't go to prison. Uh, Sorry, he goes to uh, asylum. He yeah, goes yeah, to I an thought asylum. he died. Never mind. 
<laughs> there's yeah. a point where he cuts himself and he decides to spread AIDS, which doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but, on the okay, other convenience. Like, I'll let that pass. Twist, right? Like that, that was his snap uh, uh, out of his like mm. shell, yeah. right? I get that uh, madness. But what I hated was that the father in this family, where Naoki and his oh, mother yeah. lived, he was like, he was like, fuck that, I'm tired, bye, I'm not coming home tonight. And at the meantime, the mother's dying and he's yeah. like cutting himself that, up. That, that's like, true. <laughs> yeah. it's like, what the that fuck? was so weird that he would never notice anything that was happening in that But I, I feel like that could be also like part of the critique to the fact that many Japanese fathers are so Which, if this is the outside case, of the like family... Yeah. Like situation. If this is actually uh, what it's yeah. like, it's so bad. Yeah, <laughs> that's like so bad. Like I so agree. many levels of bad. Yes, <laughs> he was like that. Didn't give any shit. He was even there in part yes. of the book. He was like at yeah. home with them, and he was like, mm, okay, I guess you're mad. Bye. I have yeah. to work now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my boss says I need to finish this report. Which is this is, <laughs> exactly, which isn't even important. Like if he had yeah. to go on a business trip to Europe, I guess yeah. I would have like understood yeah. more. But this made me really upset about Japanese fathers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew this would come up some, some like eventually. Yeah. So I think this is all about the plot points and like mm. things I want to bring up. Uh, rest of my notes are only a hidden thought of the day. So I'm not oh, going. Oh wow! <laughs> Let me prepare. I have a yellow card. I have a yellow card. I have a red card. So I already got one red card. So uh, I let you talk for a bit, and then we'll either end or I have some thought of the day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so anything you we forgot or anything you want to mention? Um not really. Maybe I should watch a movie. <laughs> because the movie is a little different actually. Yeah, I think it somebody told me it's like slightly, but I'm sure. Ah yeah, uh, okay, another point I didn't like Mizuki dying um you know like on Yeah. YouTube. For yeah, basically, Mizuki, Mizuki like died yeah. for basically no reason. She was so yeah. underused. I was yeah. expecting her to be more important. Yeah, that is. If true. you don't know, she is the uh, student who comes to visit Naoki when he's locked up and brings her. Um, yeah, she's the, the class representative. Class representative. She is like she's got a crush on Naoki, but then yeah. she, no, she started. She is in love with in, in Naoki, and, with Naoki yeah. and has a crush for on no Shua. reason. That yeah. didn't explain. And then <laughs> she no, they explained no it, but it was like super okay. silly. Okay, was yeah. it? Was it yeah, it was something like uh, someone, so, some of the other girls were like bed mouthing her, and she yeah. he he told her to shut up. Yeah, there was like some that. reason. Yeah, something ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. But then yeah, yeah, she becomes Shuya's lover, and she's obsessed with with murder and poison. And almost looks like they're gonna be the ultimate evil duo, and yeah. then they just like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This doesn't have nothing comes out of it. Yeah, it's kind of but she, he kills her. Like yeah, that was that was disappointing. I, I think that was to like point out that she pointed out that he has this like inner problem with himself right he has mother issues and uh, yeah. i think mm. that was to show that uh, shuya was just too far into his uh, like illusion right he was too far and he didn't really want to accept that okay there is a way to uh, there is a way to like repent or there is a way to just fix how he is because uh, maybe I have a, like also a thought of the day which you might uh, <laughs> might uh, add a Plot red card to me as well wow. but, uh, uh, I, I've been thinking about this and uh, do you think we all somehow like are kind of fucked up in our own ways well, obviously like, like everyone yeah, has yeah, yeah, some like inner demons right and yeah. kind of nobody goes through their childhood without manifesting some Absolutely. of those and uh, the, I think the book is trying to tell us that you can probably think about those demons and th those demons that you see are fine because we can do something about them and we usually like uh, kind of yeah, that's a good either point. like accept them or we just like try to uh, uh, like try to change them and like have them serve mm. us and you know that's a good just, point, yes. just uh, change the way uh, it works like change the way we work uh, if we know about those demons but what if the demons are with us so long that we just become used to them and we just feel like it's normal in our environment absolutely like, feel like that yeah and that was that mm -hmm. was 
Shuya, right? Shuya mm. lived with his demon so long that he felt that it's normal to be so, like, so in love with his mother, basically. And mm. he felt normal that it's just the only thing he cares about. And when Mizuki pointed it out, it just felt unrealistic. It just this mm. didn't match with his reality, so he had to kill her, right? In order to protect the reality. <laughs> I know well, it's makes sense. extreme. No, I mean, no, 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 that, that, that's a very extreme, good point. If you yeah. say it like that, yeah. but, then, yeah. yeah. You know, you know the term cognitive dissonance, right? Yeah. Do you think Do you think that we all have some like hidden demons that we don't actually know about, but they yes. live no, with no, us? No, definitely. And yeah, we yeah, actually yeah. need someone else to see them yes. for us, and then we can find them out and and decide what to do with them, right? I because mean, that's definitely w why counseling exists and hmm. why they get paid a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> essentially, yeah. just to listen True. to your bullshit. And tell you because what's wrong, which you, which is obvious, and you don't see yeah. it. That, that's true. That's. Uh, do you think like if if Shuya actually didn't uh, like if if the family didn't have a child, <laughs> like a second <laughs> child, and Shuya stayed with them, would this never happen? <laughs> like because Probably. that was the point. Everything snapped, right? Like that was the yeah. point where he started to make the devices, or was it mm. also before? I no, no, no. It was it was from that point on. Okay. So, so we never said that his deal was to attract. Well, maybe we did say that that he wanted to attract the attention of his mother so yeah. they could reunite happily, but he mm. didn't see that it would never happen. Because the mother was yeah. already remarried and he didn't know, and then he finds out and he gets even more mad, and that's what makes him set the bomb. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thought of the day. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You no red it. card. No red card. Okay. I, I, I feel. I feel good. I feel good. <laughs> It's the worst because Shuya is in such a position and many people are that you, I'm sure you've seen those people. They are so stuck in their ways. You see what their deal is. You see what their problem is. You try to suggest it. You try to shove it in their mouth. You try to show them in pictures, video, movies, music, and they would not do anything to see it. They are so into their world that if they were to accept that this thing is a problem, it would shatter everything they believe or it would shatter the way they live and the way they think mm. and that's too scary to do so they never do it and when they do it they have like a miniature breakdown sometimes better sometimes worse and it's so difficult yeah in this move in this book it was definitely yeah. for the worst so this is what that's happens actually, if it's the worst yeah, yeah. that's actually but, what happened with shu yeah yeah <laughs> but I, I feel absolutely the same so yeah <laughs> <laughs> so maybe what we could do is uh i'll give you just like a few but we can do it like very shortly. I'll just mm -hmm. tell you like what I was thinking about when I read this. Uh, all my like thoughts of the day. We don't have to talk about them. I just <laughs> mentioned them. Okay. And if you afterwards want to get into any of them, then we can talk about them more or we can just end. That's, all right. that's what we could do. Maybe we could pick just one thing from all this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So one thing that I was thinking about a lot was that... Uh, uh, there was a diary in the book and the mother heard from the teacher that she should write all the things down. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you remember. It's like a good plot point. Uh, remember the good things. Don't write them down, but write bad, write down the bad things and then forget them. So that's like write down your sins and forget it and then try to get children to get, sh get Naoki to like help with his mental problems to do this. Mm. And they keep saying that it helps a lot. So that's one thing I want to bring up. Another one was that they talked about all these like good and bad things to do. That uh, if you share public information in a class, and the whole book is about, of course, by everybody knowing who did it, they torture them. And there are also like small details, like if you if you publish and bring up results of tests and scores of children in a class publicly. Mm -hmm. It will demotivate them to study more, which I think is a very huge difference between Asian and Western culture. In the West, they will always publish them, I think. Yeah. In Japan, it's thinking, it's changing a little, I, yeah. I feel, but yeah. So there was another like thing that I was thinking about if it should be published or not, if like this, if it should be more open, which I think it should be, because then it would prevent from all this overthinking and all this like mental madness. Ah, but it might lead to a lot of my competition but that's yeah that's the western culture in, yeah, in there yeah. so if you want to be competitive and push people to 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, that, I don't know. Thing, yeah. I honestly, yeah. So then, uh, yeah, mothers spoiled our children so badly that it was like a thing I was constantly thinking about. It's my like gripe mm. uh, in my personal life or in other people's lives. Like this mother with Naoki, mm. she did so many things for him and she never told him no. Mm. And even when she told him no, she didn't. She told him to a psychiatrist and she was like, okay, now I'm going to put a stop to this. Until then, she would never do anything to stop him. She just allowed him and allowed him and allowed him. That That's true. But I feel like in her case, it was because she was role playing as the perfect mother. Yeah, but perfect mother isn't this. No, I know, I know. But that's like the society oh, okay. idea, society's yeah. idea of a perfect mother. And then f- yeah, but she had the image from her mother. Right? Finally, she would be like, okay, I'm, take, I'm putting my foot down. I'm bringing this to an end. Here's your psychiatrist. And you're not saying anything, so I'm going to say it. And then, okay, nothing happened. And it's okay. I'm going to allow you more. So I was like, <laughs> fucking hell, just do something. <laughs> she was like, she wouldn't do yeah. anything. Yeah, f- f- I, fair enough. I she hate, she wouldn't do anything until she tried to kill I herself. I hate this so hard. So mothers, <laughs> please say no. It's easy. Just no. It's especially yeah. Japanese mothers. No. It's just no. Yeah. That's that's all. That's all I want to say. And uh, that's the last thing. Uh, there was a thing that... Uh, Uh, kept occurring that is a phrase that uh, Shuya oh, kept saying the bubbles yeah the bubbles the yeah. bubbles <laughs> I wanted to talk about this I, I that, actually yeah, so maybe you can take over you can talk over it. I don't know I, I I just wanted to ask you what do you think it re- represented uh, because so, so Shuya uh, did things to make himself uh, realized or get attention of the mother or have his way and every time it would happen he had in his mind like a bubble didn't pop or a bubble popped late or a bubble popped mm. and what he meant by that was that he uh, wanted to get like catharsis or like how would you call it like he wanted to be okay with it was it like basically happiness he wanted to like uh, grab a bit of happiness because i i don't know if like i vaguely remember that there was like a metaphor at the uh, at the start that shuya said that he's like the shampoo mm. <laughs> like there was a bottle of was shampoo like that. it was empty <laughs> and like oh, yeah, he's, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, like I'm like the shampoo yes. I'm empty and uh, then he filled it with water and there's a lot of bubbles in there which still serve as like at least a li- something like a shampoo right so mm. and he compared that to his happiness like he he is empty his happiness meter is empty and then when he f- He's trying to fill that with bubbles, at least a little bit. Yeah, that's exactly but, what he meant, mm. yes. Uh, and like to make himself feel something like happiness. But I don't know if that actually works with that metaphor, because that's actually the like, other way. Like... I think there is a multiple way to look at it. One of them is yeah. the happiness. The other thing is like the ultimate depression, which I think this is what they wanted to do, like to have him absolutely hopeless and do no have no hope and no meaning. And I think what he was trying to do is feel something because he didn't feel anything. He was like and then Spider Man Noir. I yeah, I think <laughs> yeah. I think the bubbles point was that he wanted to have his life accomplished something or feel something. Like he did and lived and he never felt like it. And he was mm-hmm. like, Okay, I'm gonna kill somebody and oh no. And I'm gonna kill this girl again. Oh, no. I'm gonna like finally see my mother. Oh no. And then my mother died. <gasps> and it popped and I'm like, okay, nothing has a meaning now. <laughs> <laughs> it was very ambiguous, so you yeah. could take anything you want from it. That's okay. Yeah. That's interesting though. So if you've read the book and still listened until now, uh, <laughs> send us an email at mindduckjapan at gmail.com and tell us what the bubbles mean. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting yeah. because I still really don't know. Like, uh, it was a nice point of like uh, into his mind, like look into his mind, but I didn't really catch what it meant <laughs> at all. Yeah, my explanation was, like I said, I think it was just yeah, him trying it, to live it, and feel. Yeah, your your explanation makes sense. My doesn't because it would mean that it's like the opposite of what's happening. Because every time it happened, it happened when something mm. kind of bad happened to him. Like something that he didn't really expect, mm. I think. Yeah. It wasn't when he like achieved something that would bring him happiness it was the uh, exact opposite of that i think he wanted it to mean happiness and but he just wanted it to mean something uh, maybe yeah. that's what was that, the... that makes sense okay so i think we've been talking long enough so if you don't mind <laughs> we can end here <laughs> 
so thank you so much for doing oh, thank this. You. I yeah, really thank enjoyed you. discussing a book. I'm yeah. glad that this is more of a relaxed discussion <laughs> and we can actually get into it in depth. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you've also read this book, send us some comments at myduckjapan at gmail.com. I'll try to reply to them in the next episode. And uh, thank you so much for listening. <laughs> See you in the next one. Thank you. See you. Coming up in the future episodes is the Three Body Problem Trilogy. However, before we get into some of the longer books and uh, very intense discussions that probably will spread out to multiple episodes, we've decided to both choose one of our favorite short stories and do something shorter for the next two episodes. So if you want to join our miniature book club, the next episode is uh, one of my favorite short stories by Orson Scott Card. It's a part of a book called Maps in a Mirror, and the name of the short story is The Changed Man and the King of Words. If you want to try it, it's only about 30 pages long. You can have it read in one hour. So if you're interested, give it a go and join us for the next episode.